Let's look at some other specific um, structures of the heart. Let's look at one of the major arteries for blood supply to the myocardium. This is the beginning. Actually, it's not the beginning because the beginning is actually inside of the aorta. Um, so the beginning would be underneath the pulmonary trunk here. This is the left coronary artery. And the way this model is set up, this would be the continuation of the left coronary artery. So this is left coronary artery. And if I put the model back together, the left coronary artery has already branched and it's coming out here and here. This vessel coming down here and lying inside of the in, um, interventricular sulcus is the anterior interventricular branch of the left coronary artery. And this vessel is the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery. The left coronary artery is important if a person has a heart attack and it's caused by an occlusion of the left coronary artery. That's known as a widow maker because the left coronary artery supplies most of the left ventricles myocardium as well as um, a good portion of the interventricular septum which is this area here this is interventricular septum if the blood supply to the left ventricle is cut off obviously it can't function anymore and then you can't pump blood out to the body up to the brain etc so usually if it's not fixed right away, the person will die. And that's why it's called a Widowmaker. So that's the left coronary artery and its branches. This is the right coronary artery. And notice that the right coronary artery travels all the way around here between the atrium and the ventricle to the back of the heart and almost all the way down to the apex. The right coronary artery supplies blood for most of the right atrium and for most of the posterior side of the heart. Staying at the back of the heart, this is the great coronary vein or great cardiac vein and this is the coronary sinus. All of the blood that has traveled through the myocardium, nourishing the myocardium, ends up in the coronary sinus and it will, that blood will then enter the right atrium eventually. And as we talked about in terms of flow of blood, that will eventually take it through the heart to the lungs to be reoxygenated. 25 right there is the opening of the coronary sinus into the right atrium. So again, there's the coronary sinus, and there's the opening of the coronary sinus into the right atrium. Another part of heart anatomy to talk about um, are these three branches that come off of the aortic arch. This first branch is the brachiocephalic artery. It is going to come up and branch into the right common carotid. Excuse me, it's going to come up and branch, yes, into the right common carotid, but then also more in this direction to the right subclavian artery. So the brachiocephalic the reason it's called brachiocephalic is because it branches down the arm, brachial, the right arm, and it branches cephalic up towards the head, right common carotid. The second one 
is the left common carotid artery, so it's going to go up the left side of the neck. And then the third one is the left subclavian artery. It's going to go under the clavicle and then out to the left arm. So to recap, brachiocephalic artery, right common carotid, left subclavian artery.